I'm uh, Adam Reich, and uh, I'm with WonderfulTutor.com. Uh, I would like today to talk to you about a mistake that I see happening a lot um, in arithmetic, algebra, SATs, ACTs. It happens all the time. And let's just clear it up so that way we can stop making the darn mistake. Um, what is the mistake? Well, there are two problems that sound like they're exactly the same thing. They almost look like they're the same thing. And yet, they come up with completely different answers. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So, one problem I'm talking about here is negative 3 squared. And, well, then I'm also talking about, you know, a negative 3 squared. Really different, right? Well, yes. Um, what a lot of people see with the problem on the left is they'll see, oh, okay, well, negative 3 squared. That means it's going to be negative 3 times negative 3. I know a negative times a negative is a positive. 3 times 3 is 9. So the final answer is going to be positive 9. Simple enough. Look at the right one. Well, that says negative 3 squared. So that's got to be, you know, negative 3 times negative 3. Well, I know a negative times a negative is positive. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay. So we got 9 again as our final answer. Which one of these is right and which one is wrong? Turns out the problem on the left, totally wrong. Let's talk about why. I'm going to just scroll down here and rewrite that problem on the left. Uh, now, the reason that people are making mistakes with this problem is because you must very carefully follow PEMDAS when you solve it. Now, what is PEMDAS? That is our order of operations, right? Some people say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember it. Anyway, that's, that's where I first learned it. But anyway, if we follow this order of operations, uh, we'll start with P for parentheses, and we'll say, well, there's no parentheses, so no need to worry about that. Next, we'll look at exponents. Ah, there's an exponent. There's a 2 there, right? So we'll go, we'll follow that direction, negative 3, and then we'll square it, right? But what a lot of people don't realize is that that negative out in front is actually a negative 1 times 3 squared, right? So it should look like this, negative 1 times 3 squared. Well, then we have a very different way of solving it. Uh, when we follow the order of operations, sure, we're still going to do the exponent, but then we'll leave this negative 1 here out in front, and then we'll do 3 squared first, which is 9. Now we're ready to do multiplication. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9, right? As opposed to the other problem, which, again, it sounds exactly the same, negative 3 squared. But by having that parentheses there, what it's doing is it's holding that negative and that 3 together. And it's saying, whatever you're going to do, you're going to use the whole thing when you do it. So when we square the quantity, the entire quantity of negative 3, that's going to mean negative 3 times negative 3. Go through that whole thing again. And we do, in fact, actually get the number nine is our answer. Anyway, I hope this kind of like clears up some confusion. You don't make this mistake again. Um, it's so common and boy, it'll like, it'll save you on an SAT problem. I guarantee it. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me today. My name is Adam Reich. I'm with wonderfultutor.com and I will see you on the next episode.